Well, should we ban parents from cheering on their children? Well, we're now joined by Dad of Two and podcast and author Marvin Harrison, who says parents should only be allowed to clap politely and mum of two blogger Kerry Welpdale, who regularly cheers on her own children. It wouldn't be the same, would it, Kerry, if you couldn't cheer on your kids? No, I think it's so sad that we've got to this point where we're even debating this. I love nothing more than going down, watching my kids play football and encouraging them. I know there are a few that just spoil it for the rest, and I think that's super sad. I think people need to learn how to control themselves when their mm. kids are around. And I just don't see why those few shouldn't just be spoken to, removed, so we can all enjoy Have you ever spoken to a parent that was going too far? Well, to be honest with you, they're a little bit terrifying. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> the problem, But I think, it? I, I think maybe the coaches, you were just saying before, Ben, the coaches should go up to them and say, look, the referee's not professional, these are kids, no swearing, no, like, no bad feeling about anything. We're having a nice Sunday sport. Yeah. Let's enjoy it. It's a show, social event for us as well, us parents. So for us to get behind our kids and support them and cheer them on, for me, that's the best thing I can do for my kids. Marvin, I absolutely love mm. watching my boys play football, rugby, cricket, whatever it is. Yeah. And I only ever want to be encouraging. And I have found myself at times getting frustrated mm -hmm. with what's going on. And I know when they were little, they're they, they're, their attention can wander. And often if you give a little applause or a shout, yeah. say, keep going, Jack, keep going, Jack. Mm. He picks himself up and he keeps running but we have got to a point where the FA have felt like they have to step in. Yes. There are numerous occasions and accounts of parents storming onto the pitches, mm. aggressively mm. approaching the referees. It's, it's, it, I, I totally hear what Kerry's saying, but it feels like something needs to be done. It's just a shame it has to be this. Kerry's definitely looking at it from the lens of her wonderful, smiley, warm disposition. But like, if you're a child and you're eight years old playing football and you have an adult person screaming at you, or you challenge their son and then they start screaming at you. There is somebody who's being banned currently because she ran over to a 10 year old uh, and threatened him because they tackled their son. And it's just like that one person can create such an atmosphere and ruin the whole game in the context. So if games are being canceled and actually parents are being removed from the sidelines, it's gone too far already. Mm. Um, and I think 390 uh, parents have been banned from the grassroots game in 2021. That's, that, that's more than the actual professional game. That's absurd. The argument will be, and Kerry's point, I guess, is, and I totally understand this, and I've got a very good friend who coaches an under-11 side, and the first thing he does before every game is he goes up to the parents of the opposition and says, I'm not a professional referee, I'm going to do the best I can for your kids, but I will get things wrong, so please don't be aggressive. Well, people please don't, don't listen. But that, and that's the issue, isn't it? That, mm. there are parents that there are parents that won't listen, and until it stops completely, can we have parents shouting and screaming from the side. No, because even, even in uh, sports day, my son, he was running the sprint and he was running and he was winning. And I was like, come on, Blake. And he's turned and looked at me. And then, and then he came second. So you distracted him? I distracted him. So what about it was the... so counterintuitive. He was already doing it. And I would actually ruin that moment for him with my yelling. But isn't that part of the preparation? Isn't exactly. that part of the preparation, coping with distraction, coping with the pressure? Um, yeah, my daughter played football, doesn't play so much now, but you go along and there was loads of cheering for her, loads of come on for her, but also for other teammates. I... And it, as soon as the parents are there and as soon as there's a crowd there, it does ch change the atmosphere for them, doesn't I, it? I think it's got to be fun first. And I think the first part phase is like, let them enjoy it, let them feel free, let them actually learn from the coach. And too often they're learning from parents. So, you know, parents are in the background yelling, right. shoot. And it's like, well, that wasn't a part of our, our approach. We wanted to pass a bit more. Yeah. And those countering voices, like you don't understand how powerful your voice is as a parent. Mm. And your kids can finally tune and hear you from miles away. They just know it. And it's distracting. On so, some this, occasions. No, when they want to hear you. I find that they're also very when they want to hear you, it too. They can hear you. If you say go to bed, they can't hear you. No. But if you say shoot, yeah. they hear you. <laughs> right. I definitely don't think coaching from the sideline has anything to do with the parents. That should be left to the coach. But, you know, I think encouraging, saying things of encouragement is definitely something that I don't think should be taken away from the parent. I couldn't imagine just standing there like this throughout the whole but, game. And I actually, that would actually make parents more frustrated, being like, oh, they want to say something, but they have to hold back. But it's and not about the parents' make... needs, though. That's no, the thing. No, we're it, kind it, of it, we're accommodating it, a parent's needs of, like, wanting to contribute. You're not playing. 
Your days have, have passed. You didn't make it to the yeah, Arsenal but that's team. Like saying I have the exact same feeling myself, and I'm sad about it. But I'm not going to challenge it into my son to make him. So, what like age that would you thing. say it's appropriate for parents to start cheering on their You're kid? Nev because parents never yeah, but need then to do it. What happens if your child goes into professional, a professional sport, n not football? What happens then? Suddenly, they hear all this noise around them, and that's more distracting, I feel, Absol than them Absol growing that's, up. That's, there's it. no way, but they, they never need to hear your voice because they're being coached and developed over a long period of time. And I think also then you start getting to slightly bigger levels. It's like, if you're not making it professional, it's absurd to talk about, we're gonna speak to everybody this way mm. for the 90 people that make it professional every single year. It's like, but yeah, we're but not that's like saying that. when it comes to the school environment, everyone does a GCSE to say we can't treat everyone the same, you that's can't. ridiculous. No, yeah, but you how absolutely can you in can't. one environment but not if, another? If you are neurodivergent, you get extra time, you get, a diff you get support, you get a different type of test, you get different type of things that allow you to read it differently. You get support and aid. And that's the thing Hopefully. that we've completely stopped like catering for the individual. We're just now like, it'd be fine. We're, it's like, we're not in that time anymore. We're in a time where we're genuinely looking at children and being what development and support do you need? And what they actually need is their parents separated from the coaching environment and allow the coaches to coach but their then teams. I feel like you should just have no parents and send a match report after the game to all the parents. No, but I think, you know no what it is? You know when you go to school and you see like your child singing, for example, and you, they see you, that their eyes light up and it's like, mm. that's all they need is to know that you're there and then they're more than happy yeah, you to don't do the rest shout of from the side and sing in tune yes, sing like, better mm. sing uh, better. louise says <laughs> i mean it's not that good well, lots, environment. Of, lots of people getting in touch i think the thing that you, the difference is and this is what louise point it's not the cheering of your children that's the issue it's the ones that are commentating on the other kids or the yeah, young I referees yeah. it's awful sometimes agree. they just can't control themselves bring on the silence in every game she's saying she can't wait stuart says i'll go one further not allow parents to watch it all he's coached rugby for years, the amount of genuinely decent, good community people who turn into absolute <laughs> lunatics on the sideline, ban them all. And I think the, the experience of coaches within a team, a young team, is so important for this to understand mm. the pressure that they're under. And I've been guilty of it in the past. I know I have. When I go to West Ham and I cheer and shout, mm. I can shout at the referee, but you're a voice of, you know, the, I know the ref's not going to hear me. Mm. But the idea that those young people are being sort of put under that much pressure in that. And I would much rather everyone could be on the sideline like you, Kerry, cheering them on, being really mm. positive and only having that positivity. But those few that get in the way... Yeah, although some people say we're, the parents are the ones that have to do the washing of the kit and the driving, so they've got to have some release. Some <laughs> yeah, it's true. I just standing went, in the rain. Standing freezing. in the rain, freezing. I just spent a lot of time going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, apologising for Darcy. Is your daughter OK? We played, I played rugby for a long time, and mm. when we were about sort of 15, 16, we played against a local grudge match. Yeah. And one of my teammates, uh, who was quite feisty, and we were, you know, we were 16-year-olds from Essex, so yeah. we were quite happy to have a feisty game. There was an altercation on the pitch and the mum ran on the pitch and started taking out with my teammate which of course we all absolutely <laughs> loved because it was hilarious <laughs> that our mate was being berated by the mum for having an inter altercation with her son and we still tease Paul about it now yeah, the fact yeah. that his mum came on and sorted him out <laughs> <laughs> told him off yeah. I, I think we've got to be very very clear like parents you know let your children play the game just take a step back and after the game give them all the feedback you want that your child but on the gate let them play and let them be a part let in the moment free. with the coach yeah. okay. oh come on uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be referee this now. Politely clap your bow, politely applaud your bow, and say, Here's the weather with Laura.